What are the pros and cons of transconjunctival deep plane mid facelift? I am 47 and I'm considering having a facelift in the next few years. I saw a video of a renowned British plastic surgeon performing a TDML and securing the lifted layers with titanium screws inserted into tiny holes drilled into the patient's cheekbones. What are the potential drawbacks of this operation? And could it be combined with a traditional face and neck lift for maximum vertical and horizontal rejuvenation? Thank you for your question. You submitted without any photos a question stating you're 47 years old, you're considering having some facial cosmetic surgery in the future. And you state you saw a, um, a colleague, a British colleague, perform a procedure called transconjunctival deep plane mid face lift, uh, which involved uh, using uh, drill holes and titanium screws um, in the cheekbones. And you're asking, can this com be combined with um, other forms of facelift and I think you're looking for some kind of guidance as far as the overall benefit of such a procedure. Well I can give you my perspective as a practicing surgeon. I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic surgeon uh, practicing in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. The concept of mid facelift actually is not a new concept and it has been uh, kind of basically advocated very um, aggressively by a very small group of doctors. Um, but I could tell you historically my experience and in, in around 1997 uh, one of our senior oculofacial plastic surgeon in our society presented uh, his results and we were all very excited about the benefit of mid facelift. Now that being said, I'm going to just review with you a little bit about what the concepts are of facial aging and where does mid-face lifting fit in this context. Well, to begin with, understand that as we get older, there's a loss of bone, muscle, fat, and soft tissue. So there's, everything goes inward. And in addition, there's sagging and there's descent. What I have concluded over time and experience, especially for someone who's 47, is that you're in a place where your mid-face has not actually descended so much as it has deflated. There's a big difference. This mid-face lifting procedure, as passionately advocated as it is by some colleagues, I have, as a specialist, been in a position to fix a lot of these so-called ideal procedures because one of the challenges is is that the face the mid face is lifted vertically upward and to uh, methods such as the use of screws and titanium screws and various types of fixation devices whether it's at the rim at the cheekbone in the temporalis in the temple area I have found that many of these mid-face lift procedures, the patients look too elevated. They almost look like chipmunks or a, a, like a lion. And then those, a lot of those cheeks drop. And when they drop, they pull the lower lids down. Now again, my view may be a skewed view as a specialist who I get to see, where I get to see people who have ectropion and lid retraction after mid-face lift. But I would tell you what my thought process is because as an oculoplastic surgeon, mid-facelift is certainly something that I have done and have, um, no, have no problem in terms of comfort working in that space. But I can say that I would say that proportionally in the mid-face, volume loss is greater than descent. And that in the rest of the face, where the skin sags and there's jowls and there is um, loosening of the neck skin, that's where traditional facelift is more appropriate. So depending on what your situation is, but in, in my practice for someone who's 47, I will probably do something that more likely corrects the mid-face volume loss, either with something like facial implants 
like a cheek implant, or by structural volumizing using a method of apply, application of filler at the mid-face level. For my aesthetic, my aesthetic is more of a, a natural aesthetic. I feel like if you really restore structure, then you can be more conservative with these more aggressive procedures. And there's no question that mid-face lift, if you're trying to really get a lot of lift, is an aggressive procedure. And you want to be sure that the character of your face remains the same. So think through this. You know, as impressive as these surgeries can be, there's a time and place that's right for everybody. But you want to think of what kind of outcome you will ultimately have. And I would suspect that if you keep yourself fit and healthy and you're 47, then volume correction, even though it may require some maintenance, has a much more natural look to it than aggressive vertical lifting of the soft tissue of the cheek. When you think about it, there's not that much tissue to lift, and that's also something that's a clue as to what has really descended. Um, with, with facial volume loss in your 40s, I think that you would probably be better off considering volume correction before doing a more global, more aggressive procedure. I think that you need to learn more, meet with doctors who perform these procedures and learn about these options. And I think you'll find that a lot of doctors will approach the facial aging process differently. But I think you need to really get a full understanding as to what is the outcome and what are the relative risks involved. So in my experience, where patients who need a facelift, let's say in their late 40s and early 50s, I'll do the facelift first and do some volume correction afterwards and really create the ideal balance where it looks like you're, you look like yourself but you don't and, and you and you still look natural. Again, this is an art and there are going to be many people who are going to, who are going to agree and disagree. So it, you have to find the right doctor you're comfortable with so you can proceed with the solution that fits your needs. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question.